What's up guys? So multiple requests to do a video over loops. Okay. When I say loops, I'm talking about flow volume loop and I'm talking about pressure volume loop. Okay. So I'm going to break these down for you as easily as I can. <coughs> Excuse me. So the, the, these loops tell you a lot of stuff. Okay. But I'm going to break it down for you to the most simplistic thing that you can find specifically on these loops. Okay. Now we're going to start with the flow volume loop. Okay. So this is flow volume. Okay, and when we talk about the flow volume loop, loop, we're talking about a loop that looks something like this. <clears throat> okay, this is inspiration, this is exhalation. Okay, that is the flow volume loop. Now, there's a couple of things that the flow volume loop will tell you about your patient. Okay. The first one is this. Now, what I've got to do is I'm going to take the normal off of it, okay? we got to know what normal looks like. To, as a matter of fact, you know what? I'm just going to draw another one right here. So that's normal. And then I'm going to draw this one here. So this would be abnormal. Okay? Now, if you notice, the first thing you might notice about this abnormal this is normal this is abnormal okay what you notice is this area right here okay if you ever see a flow volume loop and it's scooped in like that okay that equals an obstruction obstruction now that obstruction could be bronchospasm that obstruction could be secretions. That obstruction could be the patient biting in the tracheal tube. It could be a fixed airway obstruction, such as a tumor. Okay? Um, so you got to find out what it is and fix the obstruction. If it's bronchospasm, give them aerosolized albuterol or, or, or a beta-adrenergic. If it's biting on the on the endotracheal the tube then put a bite block in if it's secretions then suction your patient if it's a tumor go you got to have surgery there's nothing you can do okay so understand that some things can't be fixed okay so this is the first thing that you need to understand is this scoop means that there's an obstruction you got to figure out what's causing the obstruction okay now the second thing is you may see a sawtooth pattern like this Okay, the sawtooth pattern equals secretions, which means the patient needs to be suctioned, or sometimes there's water in your circuit that needs to be drained. Now, if that water is on the inspiratory limb, that condensation is in the inspiratory limb, then you'll see the sawtooth pattern up here. And you need to check your inspiratory limb. If it's on the expiratory side and your patient has clear breath sounds, then it's condensation and water buildup in your expiratory limb of your circuit and you need to drain that side. Okay? Now, those are the two big things. The scoop tells you there's an obstruction. The sawtooth pattern tells you there's either secretions that your patient needs to be suctioned or there's water, or excessive condensation in your tubing. Those are the two big things. Now, other people will say like, well, what if it doesn't close? Okay, so what if it comes here, but it doesn't close on the backside here before the next breath starts? Well, if it doesn't close, then it could be air trapping or a leak, okay? This is the flow volume loop, okay? It could be air trapping or it could be a leak. But you already know that because you've already assessed your scalar graphics, your flow time and your volume time. And if they're not coming back to baseline, then guess what? This isn't going to close. you got to understand that these loops are an XY presentation of your time graphics. So when you say flow volume loop 
if your flow waveform on your scalar graphic is not coming back to baseline, then this isn't going to close. If your volume isn't coming back to baseline, then this isn't going to close. And you already know from previous videos and your previous knowledge base that flow not returning is air trapping. Volume not returning could be air trapping or a leak. Okay, so you have to investigate that. Okay. The scoop will show you obstruction. The secretions will show with the sawtooth pattern will show you secretions or excessive water. Which by the way, the sawtooth pattern will probably most likely show up on your scalar graphic also. Okay? So just be aware of that. That's your flow volume loop. Really two things to remember about it. Okay. Here's the bigger one of the two. This is your pressure volume loop, okay? And I'm gonna draw a normal one over here and I'm gonna use the board here to draw one and show you what it looks like, okay? As a matter of fact, I'm not. I'm just gonna draw it all right here. Okay, so this is your pressure volume loop. This is pressure, this is volume running up this way, okay? Several things that this loop will tell you. It's my favorite graphic, it's my favorite um, loop to look at. So there's about six points that you need to absolutely be able to talk about. And I could push this up even further than that, but some of them are common sense, okay? Like for example, if this is five centimeters of water pressure, then obviously you're starting at five, so you have a peep of five. You already knew that from the, from the, before you even got to your pressure volume loop, you already knew you had a peep of five, okay? So, so that's not anything mind blowing there, right? So let's talk about the things that you need to know. Now what I do is I break this down into four points plus two. Now that gives me my six talking points about the pressure volume loop. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase this because I want to show you how to remember my four points plus my two that give us our six talking points. I'm going to erase this. You understand what this looks like. So what I'm going to do here is draw something like this. And that, my friends, is what I call a diamond, okay? How many points does a diamond have? Four. You're exactly right. Now, the first point is right here. This is point number one. If you notice on the back end of the pressure volume loop, it sucks way back here and creates what we call a fishtail. then your patient is having a hard time triggering the ventilator or they have an extremely increased work of breathing and their diaphragm is dropping extremely fast okay but whatever's happening is they're pulling a large negative tail and it creates this fishtail look on the back side okay that's point number one the way you fix that is first is my sensitivity set correctly and if it is, then you need to then assess if your flow is set correctly because your patient may be flow hungry, okay? And if they are, then you need to fix their flow hunger. But most of the times, this has to do with inadequate sensitivity settings, okay? Now, the second point comes here. This is our second point. This is called our lower... I'm not gonna write it all out, I'm just gonna say it and put it like this. This is our lower inflection point, okay? This is also called our critical opening pressure. So if you remember, don't give the cop lip, then you know those two go together, okay? Now critical opening pressure is the point at which the alveoli have said, okay, I'm now ready to receive more volume without very much pressure change. 
Okay, I'm gonna say that again. I'm now ready to receive more volume. I'm past the point of resisting this volume, this volume that's coming in. You've been trying to pop me open, pop me open, pop me open. Now I'm open and I'm ready to take the rest of the volume. And that's called critical opening pressure, okay? Now, critical opening pressure is where optimal peak is ballparked, okay? Now, obviously, you can't obviously set it there if you're going to have negative cardiac effects. But it makes sense that if the alveoli at this point right here are open and ready to receive volume, that that would be the point at which you would want to hold them open. You would prevent that initial increase in pressure without very much volume being given. Think about those real small balloons that are hard to blow up. Push air into them. They're really, really hard. You're pushing hard, pushing hard, pushing hard. And then they eventually break and go and they just expand easily. That's critical opening pressure. Okay? Or the critical opening point. Okay, so if we can hold them at that point, then the lungs should receive volume easier with very little pressure change. Okay, now the third point is obviously going to be up here. This is number three. This is the bird beak. Now, the bird beak tells us that we have over distension okay now this right here is not a bird beak but if it came out like that that's the bird beak and that's over distensioned and there we need to decrease our delivered tidal volume because we are over distending the lungs Okay, so that's our point number three. Point number four comes back here at critical closing pressure. This is where the alveoli are beginning to close. And we would not want this to happen, any of this region. So what we would want is to set our critical closing pressure would be our minimal peep. Okay, so if you ever see your closing pressure right here, and you got this area that's falling off behind it. It should really come straight down if you have your seat, if you have your peep set appropriately, because you don't want your alveoli to collapse as they lose volume uh, upon exhalation, right? So you want that, you want to recognize that and make sure that when you get to critical closing, it falls basically straight down. Okay, now if you notice, I can draw this like this, and it is a pressure waveform. Now this is one, two, three, and four. Now what I want you to realize is that two of them are animal parts being the fishtail on the back side, on the front, depends on if you want to call this front side or the back side, but the initiation phase of the breath that tells you about sensitivity and work of breathing. The other one is the bird beak over here that tells you about over distension. You run the risk of barotrauma if you keep this present, okay? So you don't want this, you don't want this flattening out on this side, okay? You want this to come together like this. Just like this, okay? And ideally there won't be a bird beak there and you'll have nothing to talk about, okay? Now the other two are critical closing pressures. You have your critical close, you have your critical opening upon inspiration. You have your critical closing upon exhalation. Okay? Now I gotta make more room here, so I'm gonna erase this. Those are your first four points of your diamond. Okay? Now, if your your loop here goes more upright, then you have an increase in your compliance. If your loop lays down, you have a decrease in compliance. 
Okay, so when I say lay down, I'm talking about if you ever have a loop that looks like this, that's a decrease in compliance. If you ever have one that looks like this, that's an increase in compliance. Now, increase in compliance goes along with emphysema and your, your COPD. Your decrease in compliance goes along with everything else, such as your pneumonia, your pulmonary fibrosis, your pneumothorax, atelectasis, pleural effusion, all your restrictive lung disease diseases, okay? The only thing that causes an increase in your in your compliance such as this is going to be your emphysematics who have big floppy lungs and over compliant lungs. But it's important to understand as they move up, they're getting better. So you have a pneumonia patient comes in, you assess your pressure volume loop on day one and it looks like this, but on day two, it shifted upward. and day three, it shifted even more upward. Then you know your patient's lung compliance is getting better. You should already know that through your calculation of your static compliance. But if by chance you didn't look at that and you look at your pressure volume loop, then you will see that happening, okay? So that's the other point is your compliance. And then the last point is airway resistance and you will see airway resistance show up let me erase this so i can start over here okay because i'm running out of i don't really have a good area so this is normal airway resistance will show up by this protrusion of this front side okay so this is an increase in airway resistance okay and that's your six points for your pressure volume loop your two animal parts your fishtail at the beginning of inspiration your bird beak at the end of inspiration know how to fix them your critical opening pressure which is associated with optimal peak your critical closing pressure which is associated with minimal peak your uh, angle at which the loop is standing up to be associated with compliance and the front end of this loop protruding outward and getting wider is an indication of increased airway resistance and that's your flow volume loop and your pressure volume loop broken down as simplistically as I can do it. Good luck guys.